everybody. So I have a bit of a more serious video for you guys today. A lot of you have already heard that I am no longer a member of Miami City Ballet. From the time I have started this YouTube channel six years ago, was being honest. Literally, to the letter, good times, bad times. Um, and so I want to be honest with you today. Hey everyone, welcome back to Club of Dance News. I am Isma Rodriguez. And no, I haven't drank any coffee. I'm just excited about this interview. You know, when I saw Catherine Morgan's video on why she left uh, Miami City Ballet, I wanted to contact her and ask her if she could give me an interview because I wanted to ask her a few questions from a dancer point of view to another. So she was so nice, so lovely. She got up early in the morning to give me the interview. Now, that being said, that was not the only thing we talked about it. We have some student from Mobile Ballet that wanted to ask her a few questions. As you probably know by now, Catherine Morgan is from here, from Mobile, Alabama. Also, I have a segment that I include here in the program that is called Know Me Better with One Second Answers, and we had a blast. So guys, stay to the end. Don't forget to subscribe. And now let's welcome to Global Dance News, the only and beautiful Catherine Morgan. Catherine, thank you so much. It's about eight o'clock in the morning where you are right now. Yeah, which is why it's like the sunlight's sort of still coming in, but not really. <laughs> I'm trying. So. I'm very excited. Very excited that, to have you on the show. Welcome to Global Dance News. Thank you. I'm thrilled to be here. Glad we got to do this. So let's start with the first question. It has been like five days, you know, five days has passed since you, you spoke in your channel about your departure from uh, Miami City Ballet. I think the whole world have seen that video. <laughs> and uh, I saw it like two times. So today, how do you feel today? It, that's a great question because the, the, my phone has not stopped blowing up since that day. Um, you know, I had no idea when I posted it, it was going to turn into what it did for me. You know, I left in April and it took me six months to have the courage to do it. And, it, and to be honest, I almost didn't. Um, I thought, well, I can just, you know, with the pandemic, I can kind of slide under the radar and just say, oh, it wasn't a good fit for me and the whole thing. But that's what dancers have been doing their whole lives. No one ever speaks up. No one ever says anything. Or if they do speak up, it's once they've retired. And I thought, you know what? I, ha I have to say something. Because when I did the video back in, I think, March or February, telling people I had been taken out of Firebird, just about body image and things, the response I got from that was overwhelming from dancers saying, I've been through the same thing. I've had an eating disorder since I was 12. And, you know, all these things that I thought, I have to say something. We don't create change by being, you know, nice and going along and going, yeah, it just wasn't the right fit, you know. So I thought, well, I, I have to say something. So I finally got the courage <laughs> to do it. And I made sure I was very, you know, respectful and, and tried to not really name any names and, and just give facts. And the support has been overwhelming. I mean, I had no idea, not only when I spoke out, but then this gave other dancers courage who were in also in Miami City Ballet and other companies to finally come out and say something that made it worth it to me because I did have some colleagues call into question what I said um, because at that point you know when I am going through something I internalize and so yeah I put on a face and I, I don't you know I don't say anything and I wasn't you know, sharing everything with everybody every day. And I, at one point after the Firebird thing, I was like, yeah, I'm out. I can't, I can't keep going in this building unless I have to. And so I'm sure that was misconstrued as I didn't care. I was a snob. I, you know, and, but I was, I was really, really struggling at that point. And so that's why I did the follow-up post on Instagram two days later, because I wanted to sort of clarify that as well. But all of that aside, any negative comments are completely outweighed by dancers coming to me going, thank you. Thank you for saying something. I, you gave me the courage to say something. This has to change, you know, and, and so that makes it all worth it. So there's, there's been some <laughs> up and down emotions. Like, I don't know if I should have done this. I'm really glad I did this. I really shouldn't have done this. I'm really glad I did this. <laughs> so, but all in all, I'm, I'm very pleased that I said something. Now have anybody from Miami City Ballet have contacted you and saying, hey, hey, I'm so sorry that you're feeling this way. That wasn't the intention. Anything. 
several dancers have reached out to me and said some beautiful things. Thank you so much. We were all, you know, you brought to light some things that we were all dealing with that we had no idea we were dealing with because we just assumed it was the norm. Um, so thank you for speaking out when the rest of us can't. Um, there were some negative comments in a Facebook group and on other people's profiles. No one has actually come out to me and called me out. It's all been like, you know, internet comments and things, but nothing from artistic, nothing from any of the, you know, people in the administrative or artistic side. No, um, just a couple of dancers coming out and thanking me. Um, but, and I didn't expect, I didn't expect anything from them um, at all. Now, of course, as a dancer myself, and actually as a human being rather, we get very hurt, we get very upset, and very disappointed when things like this happen to us. Mm -hmm. That being said, do you read the contract? Maybe there's those little letters that you cannot see sometimes. And do you read the contract that maybe it says, listen, even though we might offer you these roles, uh, you is, is in the discretion of the director that you will dance or not? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure it says it in there. It says it in every contract. My problem was that, you know, the costume fittings early on, the, oh, you're going to do this early on, and then being taken out at the last minute that after casting her even posted or, you know, and I, I, because I've experienced it in New York City Ballet, just because you learn something doesn't mean you're going to do it. I know that from day one. I think we all do. But just sort of like, yes, you're going to be doing this and then to back out on it or, you know, having the costume fittings and then, oh, sorry, or being cast and pulled several days before. That was the issue. But absolutely, there's no guarantee you'll ever do anything. Um, and that's in, I think that's in everybody's contract. You said in one of the rehearsals, I think it was one of the last rehearsals that you lost it. That, that was when you lost it. What mm -hmm. do you mean that? Do you scream? Do you just left the room or you just lost it in your head? I lost it in my head and I started crying quietly in the corner because I'm really good at not crying in rehearsals. Like I, I'm really good at holding it together. But once, I mean, I remember vividly, like the ballet master, said, okay, everybody, and called us all up and said, you know, there will only be one cast of strangers in the night, Katie, I'm sorry, in front of everybody. And, and then I went up to him afterwards and I said, what's, you know, I, can I do the next weekend, the whole thing? And he said, no, I'm sorry, we need him for other ballets, we're worried you injure him for, that's when I was told all of that. That's when I was just like, because I had already been cast and people were coming to the show and it wasn't done to me privately. Like, you know, it was just sort of like, <laughs> At that point, I just, I started crying because I didn't make a big scene. I don't ever make a big scene. Um, I didn't scream or run out, but I was over in the corner sitting down quietly because usually also when I'm understanding something or I'm covering something, I'm up in the back, I'm standing. Most of us are, you're standing, you're doing it. At that point, I just sat down on the side. I was like, I have no, nothing left in me to even mark this in the back. <laughs> like, so I just sort of sat down on the side and just was like, I, there's no point, so. What do you think would have happened if you didn't make the decision to leave? Because I know you were scheduled to perform Mercedes, but because COVID, that didn't happen. Um, I was going to do Mercedes and I was cast to do Mercedes. I'll admit in the back of my brain, I thought, well, am I going to be taken out of this <laughs> two days before again? Um, I think it would have been fine. I, I'm not entirely sure, but if I had decided to stay, what I think would be interesting, you know, my health is already so much better since I, I left. And my doctor, I just remember that doctor's appointment over New Year's and him going, I don't care what situation you're in, get out. Because he said, I'm looking at you and you're miserable, your numbers are bad, you know, your blood work is bad, your hair's coming out. You know, he's like, well, what? And he's the one that first posed the question to me. He's like, is this worth it to you? you know, is this worth it to stay in a situation that's doing this to you mentally and physically? And he said, I don't care what you have to do. He said, you just get through your situation and make to put yourself first, put yourself first, put your health first. Um, don't start, don't starve anymore because he's like, what, what, what's the point of this? Why are you doing this? And that's when I started to think, because up until that point, honestly, you know, as a dancer, you always think it's your fault. I didn't work hard enough. I'm not thin enough. I, uh, you know, and at that point I started to think, well, 
maybe he's right. Maybe this isn't worth it. Maybe I, maybe it's not my fault. Maybe I'm just in a place where my body can't handle this. Maybe the expectations are too much. So at that point, that's when I thought, okay, you know, I started to consider to leave already. And then in February was when I made the final decision. But I think if I had stayed honestly, or taken that leave of absence um, that they offered, I probably would still feel awful. I would probably, I think my body would have just shut down. I really do. And it was a situation of me just having to get out. Tell me something. Aren't, aren't you afraid that maybe other companies now that you spoke, that they don't want to hire you because maybe they say, well, something happened. Maybe because she's very popular, she will go and say it. Are you afraid that they're not going to uh, ask you to join their company? I mean, that absolutely crossed my mind. I knew that speaking out, I could be essentially blackballed across the entire ballet industry with every company director. But I thought, you know what, even if I am, even if no company director agrees with me, no company director wants to hire me at this point in my career with what I've already built, with what I've established and the, the, this idea that I have with the new project and, and different things with what I've already built, that's okay. That's okay. Um, because now I'm doing this on my own terms. And if no company director wants to hire me or no company director agrees with me, I'm going to be okay. And that gave me the freedom to speak out because this issue is too important. And that's what I realized, you know, so be it. If I am, you know, the villain across <laughs> in ballet company directors' minds, so be it. That's okay. Because there are too many dancers suffering in silence. I couldn't not say something. Now, I, would, um, I wouldn't think that uh, I, another director will think that. However, if I were a director from a big company, I would hire you right now. So. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right, let's continue. Before we jump into some questions that some dancers want to ask you from Mobile Ballet, uh, tell me a little bit, I know you spoke about this uh, in your channel, but tell me a little bit about that idea dream that you have well when i was a young student at mobile ballet that's where i grew up um oftentimes we would have these galas and it would be like gala evening of stars or new york city ballet gala and you know six to ten dancers would come in and do a, a gala evening different pot of those, different excerpts but but what was so wonderful is that the students that the advanced level students were always involved so one year the, the gala evening of stars we did fourth act swan lake with two principals from i think it was city ballet i can't even remember two principals did odette and siegfried and we were the swans and then we would change and go out to the audience and watch another year we did a carmen suite opened the gala um i think the principals in that were also guests And then the, the stars did the rest of the evening. But, and I just remember loving being backstage with them and, and seeing them warm up and seeing what they looked like before they went on stage and what they did, you know, it was like a highlight for me. Instead of just sitting in the audience watching, we got to be involved. And I remember loving that. So that's sort of the idea around this little touring company. I would love to bring in six to 10, each city of my professional friends and have us have whatever rep we're going to do, but then also whatever local ballet school is there, you know, have them sort of host us in a way and maybe use their studios to rehearse or whatnot, but also get their, you know, if not the whole school, the, the upper level school students involved somehow doing a, either a piece that maybe my boyfriend Chris will set on them or a piece they've already done. Um, if they have a little, you know, competition piece that they've done at some ballet competition or something, and have them open the show or be in the show somewhere and have us do the rest and then obviously do a master class and i would love to sort of tour this into different cities and you know mobile ballet was always in the back of my head to do this with you guys because you guys perform so much which is amazing which is how i got my performance experience so that's sort of the idea that i had and that way also for me personally i can dance on my own terms and i don't have to worry about being under the stress of pleasing a director, honestly, um, and being able to just go out on stage for the joy of it. Because honestly, too, the one show of I'm Old Fashioned that I had um, at Miami City Ballet, I didn't actually enjoy it because I was so fixated on what they thought of it, what I looked like, oh my gosh, they think I'm huge, da da da. And it just, it, I ended up after that show going, you know what, I don't actually 
think I enjoyed that. And that's what I want to get back to for me personally is loving being on stage for me, not to please anybody else and to also give back to these kids. So that's sort of what the idea is. And I've had a lot of people reach out to me. It's been crazy. I've had stage hands send me emails. I've had ballet, like a ballet master. I'd love to be your ballet master. I've had professionals sending me their resumes. I've had schools. I mean, it's amazing. And I think everybody's on board. So that's fantastic. You will see how much oof, relief you're going to be. Uh, and I wish you the best, obviously, everyone. And uh, I hope we can talk more about this in the program, about your, your, the dream and uh, your project. And whatever we can do to help you, of course, you, you have our support. So uh, keep me posted and um, any promotion or whatever, know that you need it, but uh, we are here for you, okay? Thank you. So, and let's go to the fun part. Yeah. So let me see. I'm going to show you some of the questions that some a student from Mobile Ballet want to ask you. I'm going oh. to the videos and you are going to listen to it and answer okay this is the perfect this, this is the first question it is from kate langworthy and this is what you have to say okay hi Catherine. my question to you is what is one thing you do to help with stressful situations well kate that's a fantastic question um and i think it's a it's a personal thing as well like we talked about earlier you know you have to find an outlet. You have to find something outside of ballet. Um, and that's one thing this year I think I, I did not do well. I think I got so fixated on ballet that I forgot about life in general. So I think as long as you have an outlet, if you have another interest, if you have you know support from family, um, that's huge. So just make sure you're taking care of you, you're taking care of your own well-being um, by having other things other than ballet. I think that's so important. There you have it. So the next person, um, her name is Kathleen Walker, Walker, I think. Um, and she said this. I wanted to ask what motivated you to still go to the rehearsals at the theater, even when you weren't performing? Fantastic question. Um, in all honesty, because I had to. Um, one of the policies in ballet companies is that no matter you know regardless of whether you're we're performing if you're covering or understudying the ballet you have to be there at all rehearsals um and for us we also had to be there at half hour for performances so even though i knew i wasn't going on i knew i wasn't going to perform i was still covering that part in case something happened in case you know the dancer got injured so i honestly went because i had to it was very difficult to sit backstage and watch rehearsals and be in the theater when I knew I wasn't going on. You know, that was, that was difficult and knew I had already been cast and was taken out because it's one thing, you know, a lot of young dancers will understudy. There might be a third cast that's the cover. Um, you know, they have to go as well, but to know that you've been cast and then taken out and still have to cover, that was, that was hard. But I, I did because I had to. Excellent, excellent. So next, a uh, student, her name is Eleonore Stewart, and this is what she has to ask. Hi, my name is Eleanor. I have two questions. What made you first fall in love with ballet? And also, what surprised you the most when you first became a professional dancer? Thank you. Eleanor, that's a great question, both of them. Um, the first thing that motivated me and, and inspired me was the music. Um, when I was younger, music would come on and I was just, you know, taken by it and had to be, had to become the music, which is why I started dancing. I just wanted to become the music and dancing was the only way I knew how. And then I remember um, my parents telling me that the Bolshoi's Nutcracker was on one Christmas and I was just like, mm. and just couldn't take my eyes off of it. And that was it. I mean, that I, from then on, it's all I ever wanted to do. But I think the biggest the, the, the surprise for me as a professional was the fact that the performing was the easy part. It's the day-to-day -day standing in the back, especially when you're younger, your first couple years in the company are rough. You stand back and you understudy everything. You have to learn multiple parts of certain ballets. You have to, you know, you're always going to be in the back. You have to 
you know, like make way for the principal, like all these little things that you could get thrown on at any minute. It's, it's not necessarily, everybody assumes the performance is the hard part. Performance is the easy part. Performance is the glamorous part. You know, like, oh, thank goodness I have my tiara on. You know, <laughs> like, let's go out and dance. So that's the fun part. And it's just the day-to-day -day grind, really, that's so hard. So, so hard. Um, because oftentimes standing in the back of the rehearsals, as you know, hurts more than dancing. <laughs> just standing there and standing there and, and having to cover three different spots. I remember covering three spots in Serenade, at least, maybe four. And like trying to, okay, which, which girl am I today? So those sort of things are what's hard about being a dancer. Hi, my name is McKinley White. How do you think COVID-19 will change the hiring process of professional dance companies in the next few years? McKinley, that is fantastic. And there's no way to, to know. I think the biggest thing we have to worry about right now is surviving COVID. You know, ballet is not a mainstream thing anyway like football baseball we're not in the olympics you know we're not sort of this thing that everybody watches so it's hard enough that we we survive anyway let alone through a pandemic um i think what companies need to focus on through this whole thing to survive is being more inclusive and being more you know, not being, you know, I think ballet for many, many years has had this thing of, well, we're very exclusive and it's a very special thing and it's very, you know, only for certain few. And I think if we keep along those attitudes, we're destined for failure. Um, in terms of hiring dancers, I don't know, we'll see. I think especially this year, it's going to be all video auditions from people. I think companies might have to downsize they might have to rethink the way they do a season who knows i mean this whole thing could change all of it but i think the most important thing right now is not to alienate your audience because we already have a struggle enough as it is and i think i think things are going to have to be rethought all right i hope you guys have all the answers catherine morgan spoke so <laughs> so Thank you so much, but you're not going yet. We have, okay. I have a section that is uh, named. So this is how it works. I'm going to ask you a question and you have only one choice and you're gonna say as fast as you can. Okay. So let's start. Okay, uh-oh. <laughs> Okay. Petit Allegro or Gran Allegro? Gran Allegro. How <laughs> about <laughs> songs? I didn't hear you say that one again, sorry. Adagio or terms? Adagio. Ballet or contemporary? Ballet. Morning or evenings? Evenings. Facebook or Instagram? Instagram. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Romantic tutu or classic tutu? Romantic tutu. Swan Lake or Romain Juliet? Romain Juliet. Romain Juliet or Serenade? Romain Juliet. If you were to become one of the following animals, which one would you be? I want a monkey or a giraffe? Giraffe. You want to be tall. <laughs> now, punching someone in the face or stay calm and dance? Stay calm. <laughs> uh. I don't know. That's it. You got the questions. You got, you actually were the faster dancer who responded to the questions. Oh, really? Oh, that's good. <laughs> Maybe I didn't ask the hard question. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, the Petit or Grand Allegro, that was easy. I can't. Petit Allegro is not my thing <laughs> at all. So, yeah. Lisa, I want to really thank you again. And I want to applaud you for being so like, like a warrior. Okay. And I want you to know that we all love you. It's not the end of, of, of your career and it won't be. And uh, you know, Mobile, you had a, a home and you have a home 
anytime. So thank you, thank you so much for uh, getting up in the morning so early to do this. I hope you liked it and I hope to have you in my program, your program once again. Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much. This was, this was lovely. So. Uh, and go now and teach some ballet and educate. I do have to go teach. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much. This was great. <laughs>